Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. We're working on something pretty interesting today. I'm looking at ways to take the top or the top portion of my guitar bodies off so that I can add new tops. It's going to be part of what I do not only to the Stratocaster kit that I'm working on, which you guys are hopefully going to be following, but also to the guitar bodies that I'm going to be doing moving forward uh, later on this year and then offering as custom bodies for replacements. So what I'm doing here today is I'm setting up to be able to take that top portion off so that I can glue a new top on. I'm going to show you what tools I'm going to be using for this kind of thing and how I'm going to set up the box, and yes, that's what I'm using, a box to be able to prep those bodies to do that work. This is also going to come in handy when I want to surface the top of my body blanks and make my own shapes and stuff like that. So this is going to be an interesting tutorial, I think, for, for all of you, and hopefully you're going to find it helpful. What I'm going to be using first is this DeWalt router. Now I bought this, this is a DW618. It's got a half inch shank, that's very important for what I'm doing, I need the half inch shank personally. Um, and yeah, it's a, a nice sturdy piece of equipment, I've used it a few times, I also have a smaller one. If you're interested in picking this guy up, uh, as always, Amazon link in the description. The key though, is this little piece of kit right here. So this is a surfacing bit, a four flute surfacing rotor bit from Radian Tools. And if you're into guitar building and stuff like that, you've probably heard of these guys. They're kind of top of the industry as far as I'm concerned. They make fantastic, fantastic rotor bits. And one of the reasons their bits are so nice is the four flute aspect of it. Typically, you're gonna find a two flute type thing. So it's got two cutting edges on it on a general, uh, on your average rotor bit. These guys have four. What that does basically is it leaves less space between the cutting bits and uh, yeah, generally just makes things smoother. So I stumbled through that explanation a bit, but the key point being makes things smoother. You can see they've got really nice packaging on this stuff. It's very well secured in there, well protected. Comes just like most decent uh, bits, you know, expensive bits do. It comes covered in this wax. So we have to take that off. I mean, there's no magic to that. So I'm gonna go ahead and peel this off. But the idea here is, this is a half inch shank bit, it's going to go into that router, and what we need now is a way to keep all of that perfectly level as we go back and forth over the top of the guitar. You can't just rest it on the guitar, that doesn't make any sense because then as the guitar gets thinner, you're just going to keep going down. So we need a way to set our height, and that's where the box comes in. What I've done here is I've created some parts for this box, beginning with the bottom piece, which is big enough to hold any guitar body type that I have and actually has some extra length on it in case I want to design my own that's going to be a little bit longer or take up a little more space. It's also got some extra width. I'm going to use a, you know, whatever I want to to secure a body to the bottom of this. I've measured this out so that I've got a full two inches of working depth on here for my bit that is thicker than your average guitar body. Uh, actually, it's two and a quarter, I think I've left myself, two and a quarter inches, which is not only thicker than your average guitar body, but also leaves me extra room if I'm working with like eight quarter wood or something like that, and I wanna have that extra space. So I'm gonna set this up like this, in an open face box. I'm gonna get it glued up and, uh, and pinned together right now, and then the way that it works here is I'm going to use two brackets on my router to create a piece that I can slide across the top of this and have a nice level flat surface and make sure that I've got the height of my router consistent throughout the entire thing so I can surface down a 16th or an eighth or a half inch whatever I want and just kind of work my way down into the wood of the guitar and take the top layer off and have a nice perfectly flat surface to glue to or to work with in any way that I want. So that's about enough explaining. Let's get down to business here. We're gonna glue this guy up, use some brad nails to stick it all together and make sure it stays. A couple pipe clamps to hold everything in place overnight. And then tomorrow we'll come back and uh, hey, maybe we'll take the top off a guitar. Let's get to it.
Well, that looks like it's going to work just fine. Hmm. So the key here was to get the two sides nice and, and even, perfectly level, so they're right flush with the bottom, which is why I've got them resting on these pipe clamps. That was important uh, for me to make sure that I had a nice flat surface along the bottom because these are cut to the exact same height. These guys are just here for stability. They're just here to make sure that all of this stays nice and square and everything's held together well. They're not gonna accomplish anything as far as guiding the actual router. They're just there to make sure that this friggin' thing doesn't fall apart when I start doing it. So we can take this apart now. It's been, uh, it's been a, not quite 24 hours. I mean, I glued this up at about 10 o'clock last night uh, and it's, I don't know, 2 p.m. right now. So that doesn't matter though. Everything should be good to go, nice and sturdy. You can never have too many clamps, but when you got a bunch of clamps, it's a pain in the ass figuring out where to put them all. Ugh. All right, I'm just gonna remove a little bit of glue that came through here. Nothing too crazy. I gotta talk to uh, the last person who used this chisel. This is, this is embarrassing. I don't feel like going to get one of mine just for this though. Okay, and I actually had a couple of my brad nails come through at a bit of an angle. So I'm gonna take this over to the sander for a moment here and fix that up, sand off the little bit that came through. Now, obviously I should be wearing a mask to do this. I've got dust extraction and everything, but I'm gonna be sanding for all of like 15 seconds. So just wear a mask if you're sanding, please. You know, I know the main concern with sawdust is breathing it in, but I'm actually starting to worry about just how much of it I end up drinking. Anyway, here's what we've got. I took the bottom plate off my router. It's got its four screw holes, and I've got these two angle iron pieces of steel here with the holes in them. I used washers to attach two of them on here. I can't use the angle iron across two, holes each, so they are, there is some, some movement there, um, but that won't be an issue. If I try to use it across two, it bumps into the handles, all right? And the reason I used angle iron is because I need that rigidity, I need that extra stability that you get from having the angle, that's how I want to do this. You can also use a thick piece of, for example, MDF or plywood to get that rigidity, but this is how I opted to do it. So now, I can move this around here no problem and have that nice even height and that is the entire purpose of this one thing to note when you are creating your board or your steel or whatever you're using to bridge this gap obviously you want to be bridging the smaller gap because that'll make it easier but you need to have these long enough approximately double and i would suggest exactly that double the width of this so that you can go all the way off to one side and still have your uh, your metal on there if i were to make this I mean, I, I feel like somebody would make this mistake, you know, make these the width of this thing, thinking, oh, I can move. Well, then you have no lateral ability. You'd have to only move in a straight line. So don't make that mistake. Make sure they're wide enough. There we go. This is gonna work just great. I have two projects coming up in the very new, near future that this is going to get used on. Uh, and then God only knows how many projects after that. I do have a very large CNC machine available to me that can do the same thing but for the two projects i'm going to do this by hand because it's fun and i want to and i want to show you guys how to do it so stick around stay tuned check out those projects i hope you guys are going to enjoy them and i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please give it a thumbs up for me i would appreciate that remember to subscribe if you haven't already and i will see you next time have a good one